Hey there creepy peeps, I'm Vicky and I talk about horror all year round on this channel. If you also like to talk about horror all year round, you should subscribe. As you all are probably aware by now because this movie has been everywhere this weekend, The Exorcist Believer is a legacy sequel to the original 1973 classic horror film, The Exorcist. This new sequel follows Victor Fielding and his daughter Angela, who goes missing after being seen heading into the woods with her friend Catherine. A few days later, the girls are found and they begin to start acting strange, leading their parents to eventually believe that the girls encountered a demonic force in the woods and have been possessed. Just to get this out of the way so that everybody can watch the video comfortably. This is going to start out as a spoiler free video. There will be a small spoiler section in the middle, which I will give you warning for and a time code to jump to to miss the spoilers. I'm also going to start with like two pieces of what I think are important context just for myself and my opinions I'm about to express just like my headspace going into this movie. So first bit of context is I'm not a huge fan of the Exorcist franchise. I like the first one of course <laughs> but I saw it later in life and I definitely didn't find it to be the scariest movie ever made but just because I feel that way doesn't mean I don't appreciate the influence this film has had on the genre and just on film in general. Second piece of context is I am 50 shades of over women and young girls being the object of possession in these demonic possession movies. Like the themes of women being the fairer sex so it's just more like emotionally charged to see a woman be possessed. Like it's more harrowing to see them in danger or something. Or the metaphor that like women are controlled by their emotions or their menstrual cycle and demonic possession is just like a fun little horror allegory we can use to describe that. So that's kind of like the mindset I had going into this movie. That honestly mixed with some excitement because just looking at the trailer for this I could tell this like felt like a different kind of exorcist movie so I was hoping maybe for something different and I was hoping it was going to be scary the trailer looked kind of scary I was ready um and I, I will say the first half of the movie pretty creepy actually the first half of the movie was the best part in my opinion I thought it was really well set up the drama of the missing girls and the parents dealing with it in their own ways was compelling and the medical procedures the girls go through after they are found was so scary <laughs> and it, to me it kind of echoed the procedures that Reagan goes through in the original film which I every time I watch it I cringe so I really I really like that aspect it's something that's realistic and scary and uncomfortable and I think it, it does like in the original film and in Exorcist Believer I think it does a great job of kind of like making you uncomfortable before the scary possession stuff starts to happen. But once it gets to the exorcism I don't know if I'm just desensitized or maybe it was because I had gone to Halloween Horror Nights like the week before. Maybe I was just a little numb from scares or something, but that was like the most boring exorcism I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if it was just too many characters and the focus was scattered, um, but the whole exorcism sequence felt like a slog to get through. Like if it were a book, I would have DNF'd. <laughs> I did like the lack of focus of like the Catholic side of things though. There is one thing I'm confused about and maybe somebody in the comments can explain it to me. I feel like so many reviews that I've read for this movie after having seen it talk about how inclusive it is of other religions and I was, I was just a little bit confused because I don't know if I just watched a different movie or something or there were too many characters and maybe I, I just missed something. All I saw were a bunch of different characters who followed a different sect of Christianity but it was all technically Christianity and then one woman doing root work. It still was like a solitary focus on a, on a Christian god though. And because of that the dialogue at times just to me felt a bit preachy and weird. Although I, I will say that might be more like my own issues I have with Christianity so. I'm biased in that regard. And with that, I'm gonna kind of segue into my spoiler section right now. Um, so you can either click away if you want, or here is the time code where you can jump just to me wrapping up my thoughts, I guess. 
So most possession movies focus on Catholicism for the most part, and I don't know if that's just because, well actually I don't even know why that is, to be honest with you. I don't know why the focus is on that. Maybe it's, maybe it's because of like the, you know, like the Roman Catholic like churches and things, like the cathedrals, they look, they look the part and you know, the priest comes in with the, the collar and everything. So maybe it's just like the look of it. I'm not really sure. If anyone has some insight on that, I'd love to hear it. And I did like how the movie, despite all the religions represented being under the umbrella of Christianity, Catholicism included, I did appreciate how they very specifically told the audience like, this is not gonna be one of those movies. Cause the one point in the movie as you guys all have seen, hopefully if you're watching the spoiler section, um, the Catholic priest kind of rides in like a white knight in the middle of the exorcism and you think he's, he's gonna do it. He's gonna finish the exorcism and save the girls because that's what happens in every exorcism movie and then all of a sudden his head gets twisted around <laughs> and he dies. I will say for it largely being the most boring exorcism I've ever seen, that was the best part hands down. I just thought that was a really awesome choice. It was an interesting and awesome choice and it took away the savior role from like the sole Catholic priest and gave it to a community of people and I liked that messaging. It just ultimately felt undercooked. I would have happily sat through a slightly longer movie if it meant more like character and plot development. And the fact that we have two possessed girls I feel like stole valuable time away from any meaningful development as well because they tried to give each girl her own kind of scary moments and show how their families were dealing with it. Plus we had Victor going to fetch Chris McNeil who was barely there long enough to get her eyes crucifixed out. Just everything in the, the back half of this film felt really rushed. Ultimately this entire film really just felt like a setup for the next film. And just personally, that's not for me. I don't think that's a, a good way to execute a movie. Nothing wrong with making a movie with the intent of having sequels. Obviously, as everyone's been talking about, Universal shelled out so much money, like an unimaginable amount of money to secure the rights for this franchise. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to kind of have like a, a plan, a set plan of films that they're going to make. But I, I just feel like the, the film should stand on its own. I just had way too many questions afterward than I am comfortable with. So overall, the devil is in the details here. The film looks like an Exorcist sequel. You can tell they put in the work when it came to the lighting, the editing, the sound design, all of it matched the original film so well. Um, that was actually really impressive, but it felt like they <laughs> spent all their energy on that and then had nothing left for the plot and the characters. So it's giving undercooked. I can tell just already after having been on the internet this weekend that the emotions are mixed with this one. <laughs> so please um, share your thoughts in the comment section down below. I can't wait to read them <laughs> and see what everybody thought about this. If you enjoyed this video, there'll be two more on the screen in just a second that you can watch if you feel so inclined. If not though, I will see you very soon with a new video. So until then, stay strange. Bye.